I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You know, I think that the people lived in ancient days, a couple thousand years ago, would not do well in our world today, if for no other reason, the uh, diets. A lot of diets today, no bread. Back in those days, you had two meals a day, both of which centered on bread. That bread, salt, and water. And one of those meals, you maybe have a little dried fish. So, you know, without bread, those people would not have lived. Jesus today refers to himself as bread. And he will tell us because he is life. We think on that as we prepare our hearts and minds. Greetings to you this morning. Welcome to our service here at Trinity Lutheran Church. We follow the order of service uh, according to the worship folder here this morning. And we'll open with the first hymn. Please note uh, the hymns on the board and actually agree with the ones in the bulletin. We always like that. And so we'll open with the first hymn, verses 1 through 5.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us. For his sake, grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to our lasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. We call unto you, O God, and do you hear our voice? You ransom us unharmed from the battle waged against us. Praise the Lord. In the wilderness, we find your grace. You love us with an everlasting love. There is none but you to uphold our cause. Our sin cries out, and our guilt is great. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Restore us, and we shall know your joy. Lord, have mercy. Please be seated. Let us give glory to our God.
Well, God, you reveal your sovereign power chiefly in showing mercy and withholding judgment. Come to us with all your kindness and love and give us strength to obey your commands so that we might share in the joys of heaven. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes to us in the second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus, by the hand of prophet Moses, chapter 16. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumblings. It came about as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the sons of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the grumblings of the sons of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, in the morning you shall be filled with bread. You shall know that I am the Lord your God. So it came about at evening that the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew evaporated, behold, on the surface of the wilderness there was a fine flake-like thing, fine as the frost on the ground. And when the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? Which, by the way, in Hebrew is mana. We say it manna. For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm portion comes from Psalm 145. The eyes of all look to you. You open your hand. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Our epistle comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesian congregation, chapter 2. Therefore I, prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives. He gave gifts. This too is the word of the Lord. Come people, listen to the Lord, and he will teach you the greatness of his name. Oh, give him praise, all people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. We rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel comes to us from the Apostle John this morning, chapter 6, beginning at verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. This is after the feeding of the 5,000. Do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. Therefore they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to him, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. And so they said to him, What then do you do for a sign, so that we may see and believe you? 
What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus said then to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread out of heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God, that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, always give us this. Here is the gospel. We confess our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of the day. Grace be unto you and peace. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Christian friends, our text today is uh, kind of special to me. When you are in uh, seminary, your first year, called the junior year, after Christmas, you are uh, given a uh, Bible text in your homiletics class or preaching class, and it is to be your first sermon. This was it. That was 44 years ago. I probably preached on this particular text in those years. I concentrate especially on these verses. And so they said to him, What then is the work of God? What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. For the bread of God, that which comes down out of heaven, and gives life to the world. 
They said to him, Lord, always give us this. The Lord, sanctify us with your truth. Your word is indeed the bread of life. Please be seated. Forty-four years is a pretty good stretch of time. I'm sure a lot of you can remember where you were, maybe what you were doing 44 years ago. And as I looked at this text this past week, I knew what it was. I knew pretty much what I was going to say. Not different than the 15 or 20 times I've uh, spoke on it before. But the first thought that came to my mind is, what has changed in 44 years? My first thought was, not much. People are still sinners. The gospel is still needed. The law must be preached. Repentance and forgiveness of sins must be announced to the world. The preaching of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ still needs to be heard. And so in a lot of ways, not a whole lot has changed. You might look at it and you might say, well, the political situation is much different. Not much, really. Russia has turned out to be not a whole lot different than the Soviet Union. China is still China. Our society is still greedy, still materialistic, still worldly. Our politicians are still corrupt, being led around by the nose, made out of money. And so in a lot of ways, things are the same, and yet yet they're not. I think you know this too. I think you know too that The pews are not as full as they used to be. A lot of churches have, in fact, closed their doors. My church in El Paso closed many years ago. Couldn't keep going. My church back in Wisconsin almost closed. Took them two years to get another pastor. From what I understand, he's about ready to give up. Whatever we might have thought about our nation being a nation of God, which was always wrong, by the way, but whatever we thought, it certainly cannot be claimed that anymore. That's for sure. And the thing that seems to have taken it on the chin more than anything else is the Bible, the Word of God by which we receive that bread of life, Jesus Christ, faith in him, and thus salvation. The Bible has been beat up, frankly. The Bible is not followed by too many people anymore. Even a lot of our own believers today. They they say they believe in Jesus. They say that they believe in God, they say, they believe maybe in the Trinity even, and the virgin birth, and the resurrection, and yet when it comes to God's Word, when it comes to clear, unmistakable passages of the Bible, they can say, well, yeah, but I don't put that into practice. I don't do that. That's asking too much. That's going overboard. That's old-fashioned. That's just written by men. And yet, it's the same word that creates faith in their heart. It's the same word by which they were baptized. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Same thing Jesus said when he sent his disciples out to baptize the world. Right? It's the word that you believe when you come here to this altar to receive the true body and bread. Jesus said, this is my body. This is my blood. You believe it then. People believe it. When Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go, you're forgiven. Sin no more. 
But when it comes to myriad of other things, let, let's just take one for an example. And, and let's not pick on an easy one, right? <laughs> let's, not, let's not pick on an easy one, like, like divorce and adultery and homosexuality or something like that. Let's, let's pick a really tough one, okay? Let's pick a really tough one. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Do we, as Jesus said, truly forgive our, those who have wronged us? Whether they repent or not, that's not the issue. That's not what Jesus said. Do we truly forgive them? As God forgives us, whether we mention the sin or not. I mean, what's included when you say, forgive us our trespasses? As we forgive those who trespass against us, what's included in that? The sins, only the sins that you know about? Only the sins that you think of at that moment? No, all your sins are included, including the ones that you don't repent of because you don't even know you've done them. And so that's not included. Forgive. And really, forget. This is what the bread of life tells us. This is what Jesus Christ tells us in his word, and yet that word is set aside. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to forgive so-and-so. Oh, maybe I'll forgive them, but I'll never forget them. I'll never forget what they've done to me. How dare you offend me in that way? Our entire society has become one that has elevated themselves to the place of God. How dare you offend me in my sovereign, holy body and mind? How dare you argue and disagree with me and what I believe? There's no standard anymore. There's nothing objective. The, the bread of life has been thrown away, has been thrown into the garbage. And replaced with what? Replaced not with manna, <laughs> what is this stuff? <laughs> but replaced with junk. Kind of like those commercials now you see on TV, the little plastic particles from cigarette butts and whatever that has gotten into everything. You know, you see the person pouring them into a pitcher and then a glass and pour them into their throats and whatever. That's kind of how this, this egotism, hmm? this me-ism has infiltrated and inoculated itself and vaccinated itself into every single corpuscle of our society. And what's happened to the bread of life? Seems to be forgotten. Seems to be left away, left out, thrown away for no good reason. Listen again to how this works, right? Okay, Jesus said, work for the work, work for the food that does not perish. What does not perish? Folks, this building is going to come down someday. These pews are going to be gone. This beautiful floor that we love so much is going to be gone. Uh, uh, this nation that we sacrifice so much for and that we can we care so much for and we're going to go out and stand in line uh, to do uh, uh, voting for the primaries on Tuesday here in our state and, and all this, it's going to be gone. You, you, you think it's going to last forever? If, if God allows the world to last another 5,000 years, I suppose the USA is going to still be around. I doubt it. And, and I'm a historian by trade and by, by, by hobby, also both what I do. I, I'm telling you folks, it ain't going to be here. It ain't going to be here. It just ain't. And, and get this into your head. Every empire that has ever risen on this planet is gone. Every single one. No exception. There are no exceptions. Dust. What did God say to Adam? From dust you came, and to dust you shall return. Same with governments. Same with church bodies. Same with congregation. Same with all earthly organizations, except one thing. What did Jesus say? My word will never pass away. Not one jot, not one piddle. You know what a jot and piddle is, of course. A jot, that's the letter Y. 
which was the smallest letter in the Hebrew language, right? A yod. And a tittle was just a little tail end, a little curly cue. You know, remember cursive? Some of you I know remember cursive, right? You had to do that in school. Remember those little curly cues that you put on certain letters, right? That's a tittle. And Jesus says, not only, get this, not only will no chapter disappear, no book disappear, no paragraph disappear, no sentence disappear, no word disappear, no syllable disappear, no letter disappear, but no part of any letter will disappear ever in all eternity. And so folks, if if you're going to work for something, Jesus says, don't work for that which perishes. Okay? I I mean, it's not saying don't work at all, but but I mean, you know, put your best effort and put your top effort and your your top priority. Your top priority should not be any of those things that are going to disappear. Your top priority needs to be the Bible. Because from the Bible you get Jesus Christ, the Word of God. You don't get Jesus first. Where did Jesus come from? Does he come and flow through the ether and just land in your head? What does Paul say in the book of Romans, chapter 10? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. I'm not being Carol Burnett here. I'm trying to get you a point. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It doesn't say faith comes by hearing Jetshwar overhead. Faith comes by hearing Lord Thunder and Lightning. Faith comes by whatever. No, faith comes through this book and only through this book. That's it, nothing else. There's nothing else, period. Exclamation part, underlined, end of discussion. That's it, there is nothing else. This is the only holy artifact in the world right now. Even if you found a piece of the true cross, even if you could prove that you had a piece of the cross of Jesus Christ himself, it would not be more valuable than this book right here. And I'm not talking about this book in a museum someplace. I'm not talking about the Greek and Hebrew manuscripts of this book. I'm talking about this book, the one that's in the pew right in front of you, the one that's on your nightstand, the one that's on your coffee table. I hope not covered in dust. This book here... I don't know how I can get this across better. This is God speaking to you. You're holding God in your hands, just as if you take in God with the Lord's Supper when you come up here in a few minutes. There's nothing else about it. And so Jesus says, this is the work of God that you believe in him, he who he has sent. That's Jesus, of course. And, and this work, this is the work of God. What does that mean? This is the work of God, meaning God does the work, And this is the work of God, meaning this is godly work. So it's the work of God because God does it. He creates the faith in your heart. He converts you, not you yourself. You don't make any decision for Jesus. Jesus makes a decision for you. And this is the work of God in that this is godly work. This is the work God wants you to do. The work God wants you to do is to believe. And how are you going to believe again unless you have that word? It leads you to the bread of life. Now they ask for a sign. And Jesus said, What more do you want? I just fed you out of the color blue sky. Uh, we figure about 20,000 people, maybe more, maybe 25,000, fed with five loaves of bread and a few fish. That's a miracle right there. And, and you know, what more do you want, guys? Really, come on. Well, you know, Moses, ooh, he, he had that, it, uh, he had that uh, stuff float down from heaven. You, know? you didn't do that. Moses, he, he had those quail show up for us to catch and eat. You didn't do that. And Jesus has to remind him, hey, wait a minute. Huh? It wasn't Moses that did those things. It was God who did those things. God sent that bread down from heaven. And God sent this bread down from heaven too. You know, we do that all the time. We sometimes put all kinds of accolades and all kinds of things on organizations, like, like Moses, right? The Church of Moses, huh? Would you like to join the Church of Moses? Good luck with that, right? Moses gone a long time ago. How about the, joy, how about the Church of Spencer? You want to join that? I wouldn't if I were you. How about the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod? You're not a member of that church. You may think you are, but you're not. That's a fact, Jack. Look it up. 
They're not. If you look up at the constitution of our church body, it says that pastors and male teachers are members, actual members, actual dues-paying members of the Scots Evangelical Lutheran Center. You're not. Consider that a blessing, by the way, because no human organization can even come close to being part of the bread to taking part in the bread of life. That is what it's all about. folks. There is where you want your connection. You want your connection to the bread of life, which gives you the connection to Jesus Christ. That's where you want to be. That's where John the Baptist pointed. That's where Mary pointed. That's where the apostles pointed. That's where they all pointed, was to Jesus, Jesus, and only Jesus, through the Word, and only in that Word. The bread of life from God, that which comes down from heaven and gives life, not just to the Jews, not just to certain people, not just to Americans, not just to French, not just to British, not just to these or that, not just to these kind of, not to whites and not to blacks and not to Chicanos or, or whatever. No, 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 no. To the world. To the world. That which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Again, it's this book, folks. Because in this book, then, how we get Jesus. Jesus later on says, of course, a couple of verses, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. Again, that's eternity we're that's not just the rest of your life. That's not just the next week or month, year. That's not just if war comes uh, to our own shores. That's not uh, if, if New York disappears in a mushroom cloud. That, 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 it's beyond all of that. I am the bread of life. You will never hunger. You will never hunger for God. And you'll never thirst for his word, because it will always, always, always. I, I think, my dear Christian friends, if there's anything else we need in this society today, and you can help with this, and you can talk about this to people. You want to talk about various topics and various ways in which maybe God is blasphemed? Fine. If you really want to help, if you really want to help Christ's kingdom, talk about Christ, about Jesus. And if you're going to talk about Jesus, you've got to talk about the Word. The Word, the Word, the Word. That's what it's all about. About the Word. That's why we have Bible classes. That's why we spend so much time, three readings plus a sermon, in the Word. That's why the hymns are all based upon words of the Bible. That's why the liturgy, every word of the liturgy is based upon the words of the Bible. That's why we can claim to be a Bible church. And so I, I would hope that, that all of you, your greatest wish, your greatest desire would be along the lines of the word said by those Jews that day in Galilee to Jesus. Sir, please give us always this bread. And now the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in true faith through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen.
congregation may be seated for prayer. <clears throat> Dear God and Father, we give you praise for all your goodness and tender mercies. We thank you for the love which sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, through whom you have made known to us your grace. Thank you for the Holy Spirit in your church and the means of grace, and for the lives of all godly people, for the hope of the life to come. Let us treasure all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness by lives that are given to your service. Defend your holy church, and give her ministers with a great measure of your spirit, and strengthen her through the word and sacrament. Unite your people in all the world in the one holy Christian church, that they may bear witness to your love. Preserve our nation in honor and continue your blessings to us as a people. We may lead quiet and peaceful lives. Grant health and wisdom to all who hold office and cause them to know and obey your holy will. Give all people a Christ-like mind. Remove all hatred, prejudice, and whatever hinders peace and justice. Sanctify our homes with your light and joy and keep our children in the true faith and enable parents to raise them to a life of godliness, farming and trade and industry, along with the arts and culture of our people the protection of those whose work is difficult and dangerous. Comfort with your mercy all who are in sorrow and need, sickness or adversity. Protect those who suffer persecution for the faith. Grant peace to those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow. Listen now to the desires of our heart as we bring you our private petition. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O Father, for his sake, who died and rose again, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Do we think that God cares about what we believe or that on his account he should allow his sacrament to be changed? In our worldly matters, everything remains as God has created and ordered it. This must always be urged, for thereby the claims of all the false spirits can be repelled. The congregation may now come forward for. This is the Lord. This is His blood. This is the body of your Savior, Jesus Christ, sacrificed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the blood of your Savior shed for you.
this is the body of your Lord, given up for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the body of your Lord, given to you for your redemption. the blood of your Lord shed for your salvation. This is the blood of Jesus given for you. This is the body of Jesus Christ given up for you on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the body of the Lord, given up for you for your salvation. This is the blood of your Lord, shed for you. This is the body of your Lord, crucified for you, for your sins. The body of Jesus, given up for you and your forgiveness. Now may this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true and saving faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Depart in God's peace. Amen. And please join now in the Nunc Dimittis. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness have sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this his sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule in our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit. We may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Please join now in the closing hymn.
Please be seated. Very good morning once again to you all. Enjoying, I'm sure, the monsoonal moisture as God sends it our way. What I, I would kind of appreciate if the, the uh, internet and the power would not go off quite as often as it does. But uh, that's what happens when you live at the end of the tail end of the world. Uh, in any case, uh, this week, uh, nothing special going on. I continue to work on uh, various projects. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to decide by, hopefully by Friday, I'll be able to decide if we can start Bible class a little earlier than normal. Uh, than we have last couple years anyway, maybe around the time school starts instead of the later in September. But anyway, I'll, I'll put that in the Friday uh, a newsletter. Uh, other than that, uh, that's about it. Stay dry out there. <laughs> 